This time in the turbo garage, we're throwing sparks, grabbing gears, and accessorizing our engine. Let's go. In our last episode, we let the monster LS376-525 out of its box, took a close look at the V8 Roadster's mounting kit that would bolt it down securely, and then got to work modifying our Miata's chassis so we could get just a little motivating glimpse of what's to come. Now it's time to keep the hammer down and plow through our task list. Let's get to work. After cutting out these factory frame supports to make room for our LS3, it's important to add some reinforcement back to this area. To do so, I welded in these thick steel frame supports that I picked up from Flying Miata. This is straightforward but time-consuming work that requires patience and a fair amount of fitting, grinding, more fitting, and then welding. After taking care of the driver's side brace, I moved over to the passenger side. After many hours, here's how it turned out. We still have plenty of work to do in here, but we'll come back to this later. With a big project like this, it's common to have a bunch of jobs going on at once, so now we jump to revamping our rear end. After removing the stock Miata differential a couple episodes ago, my little helper and I gave the bare subframe a good cleaning. While that dries, take a look at what the UPS man dropped off. This is a new General Motors Getrag limited slip differential unit from a 2004 to 2007 Cadillac CTSV. It's strong, lightweight, and offers good clearance for exhaust setups. This one has a 342 gear ratio, which will be a great match for our transmission. I picked this up from V8 Roadsters, who can order this same unit or one like it with either shorter or taller gear ratios. V8 Roadsters also offers a Ford 8.8 .8 differential mounting kit, which is a good setup for drag racers and those who want more strength. The 8.8 .8 is heavier and bulkier though, which means less room for exhaust routing. Here's a look at the new Getrag differential compared to our stock Miata limited slip. You can also see the differential mounting kit from V8 Roadsters, which adapts the new Getrag diff to our stock Miata rear subframe. The kit includes the adapter bar that has pre-installed polyurethane bushings, the front mount adapter plates that get welded to our subframe, and all the necessary high quality hardware. Our first job is to lube up the bushings and press in these sleeves. Next, we bolt on the adapter bar and torque the bolts to spec.
Then we slide the new Getrag diff and adapter mount into the subframe and bolt it in place reusing the factory Miata mounts. From there we bolt on the V8 Roadster front mounting plates, set the subframe and diff on a level surface, and then use an angle finder to mount the differential one and a half degrees up. Once that is all set, I tack the mounting plates in place and then remove the differential to finish the welds. After all the welding was done, I sprayed on a couple thick coats of Summit Racing's General Chassis Enamel. This is great paint that goes on thick and even and dries to a hard semi-gloss finish. Once that was good and dry, I reinstalled the differential into the subframe and tightened up everything for good. To vent this diff properly, I tapped and threaded a hose fitting into the factory vent hole. Later on I'll connect a length of hose and a small vent cap to this. Nice! I love that factory installed look. We won't need this assembly for a while, so I sat it on a small moving dolly and rolled it out of the way. Introducing the transmission that will be bolted to our LS376525. This is the Tick Performance Level 4 Magnum. A seriously stout six-speed manual transmission that can safely handle up to 900 foot-pounds of rear wheel torque. Just saying that number makes me giggle. 900 foot-pounds. <laughs> Obviously, this is way more strength than we need, but you never know what the future may hold. Plus, there's another big benefit. Keen-eyed viewers will notice right away that this doesn't look like your standard Tremec Magnum transmission. Take a look at the rear section specifically. Out of the box, the Tremec Magnum is designed for aftermarket, non-vehicle specific use and is essentially a TR6060, the same transmission found in supercars like the Corvette ZR1 and Dodge Viper. The V8 Roadster's engine and transmission mounting kit is designed around the popular 1998-2002 F-body Tremec T56 transmission. If using a different T56 behind your LS engine, there'll be some small hurdles you'll need to clear, like the shifter position. If you want it to sit in the stock Miata location perfectly like this, you'll need a late 4th generation F-body style T56. The regular out-of-the-box Magnum transmission will place your shifter too far forward. That's why I chose the Tick Level 4 Magnum transmission that is a direct bolt-in for 1998-2002 to Camaros and Firebirds. They start with an already stout and ultra-smooth shifting new Tremec Magnum and immediately get to work improving it and modifying miscellaneous components to make it a 100% bolt-in for LS1 F-body cars and a perfect fit for our Miata too. So we get all of the benefits of the Magnum with the great fit of the F-body's T56. Nice! Now it's time to give our LS3 a little attention. Out of the box it's a fairly complete engine, but there are a host of little custom details that we need to take care of so it'll work well in our Miata. First up is the oil pressure sending unit. To adapt this to our Miata, we start by removing the factory GM unit
and replace it with this adapter fitting. Some folks placed the new sending unit on top of this brass adapter, but I chose to mount mine remotely. This is actually a VDO sending unit, which offers better performance than the stock Miata piece. We'll install this later when the engine is in the car for good. For now, I'll just cap it off. Next up, I've removed this plug in the cylinder head, which allows the stock Miata coolant temperature sensor to thread right in. This will ensure that our stock temperature gauge in the dash works great. Next on the list was the stock LS3 fuel rail. To make things easier for running the fuel lines in our Miata's chassis, we have to remove the setup and flip it so the fuel inlet moves from the driver's side of the engine over to the passenger side. Next up is the oil pan. In order to fit this engine so low in the chassis, a special low profile oil pan must be used for proper steering rack and ground clearance. There are a couple options available, and you can even modify a stock F body pan if you're brave enough, but I chose the Moroso aluminum V8 conversion pan from Flying Miata. The Moroso reputation speaks for itself, and this pan looks impressive and well made. The setup includes the pan, and your choice of aluminum or steel a new pickup tube, the screw-on oil filter housing, and the correct oil filter that doesn't hang below the pan. It offers these internal baffles with hinged trap doors to ensure the best oil supply possible when you're on the track, or if you're flying around mountain roads like a maniac. You know, whichever. To get an idea of how much room this pan frees up, take a look at it next to the factory LS3 pan that came with our engine. In order to make a low profile pan like this fit, we have to modify our stock LS3 windage tray. To do this job, I marked the areas to be cut and then went to work with my cutoff tool and angle grinder. To keep it steady, I mounted it to an old block of wood. After all that was taken care of, I smoothed out all of my cuts, cleaned it up really well, and then reinstalled it back onto the engine, followed by the oil pickup tube. I torqued everything down in the proper sequence, but we're not quite done yet. First we need to ensure that we have the proper clearance between the oil pickup and the bottom of the oil pan. There are a couple ways to do this. I chose the old plastic over the pickup tube and Play-Doh in the pan technique. That checked out within spec, so now we clean out the Play-Doh and remove the plastic from the pickup so we can bolt on the pan for good. I followed the GM service manual instructions for proper oil pan sealing and then installed the pan using a new gasket.
After everything was bolted up, I torqued the bolts down to spec. I find it handy to print sheets like these out, as you'll be referring to them often. With that job taken care of, I flipped the engine back over and parked it until we were ready for it again. Thank you for watching and be sure to visit SummitRacing.com. They offer an incredible selection of in-stock parts and offer fast, free shipping on orders over $99. Also, my build is featured on their On All Cylinders website, which is updated daily and is loaded with all sorts of great car guy videos, tech tips, news, and much more. In the next episode, the modifications continue at a pretty good clip, and more cool stuff arrives. For more pictures and details on this build, check out my website, v8mazda.com. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.